if you shop on eBay a lot, this is one of the most popular lithium-ion phosphate battery on eBay because their price is very competitive. And if you're on slick deal a lot, I bet you have seen this quite a few times before. So today I'm going to be reviewing this lithium-ion phosphate 12.8 volt 100 amp hour battery. It has Bluetooth and low temperature protection. I'm also going to do a tear down and open up this battery and show you what's inside. Let's get started. First, let me show you the dimensions of this battery. 10 inches by 8 inches by 6.5 inches. It weighs about 23 pounds or 10.5 kilogram. It has Bluetooth control, so let's first go over the Bluetooth. So first you gotta download the EcoWorthy app on your phone. And this is the first page of the app. You got system parameter, total power, zero watts. It will show you how much power you're pulling out of the battery. Battery status, standby. And that's because it's not currently hooked up to anything. Remaining battery capacity, 99.9 .9 amp hour. Remaining working time, Current battery temperature, normal. What does it mean by normal? I would prefer some sort of temperature display here instead of normal. At least it will tell you when the battery temperature is not normal right here if your battery is too cold or too hot. Let's go to data and over here it will show you the total voltage of the battery total current, total power being used, state of charge, 100%, battery status, basically a lot of repeated data from the uh, previous page. The thing that's different here is the single cell voltage. So you click down here, it will show you the voltage of each individual cell. So there are four cells inside this battery and these are the voltages of each individual cells. Next we got notification, no warning. So if there's a malfunction or some warning about the battery, it will show up here. I'm going to connect a 12 volt light bulb to the battery and see what we got. Here you can see it's showing total current minus 4.9 amps, total power minus 66 minus and that's because the battery is discharging and down here you can see the battery status discharging remaining working time 20 hours and battery capacity so there you go it will show you in real time the discharge data the thing about this app is it only shows you all the data but it does not let you turn on and off the battery so let's go back to the first page. There's no function to turn on or off. Second page and the last page. There we go. That's all about this app. I have charged the battery to 100% and the battery is currently at 13.57 volts. It's time to do a capacity test. And we are going to run the test at 10 amps. This is going to take about 10 hours. It has been 2 hours and we've got 20 amp hour. It has been 9 hours and the capacity is 91 amp hour. We're getting there. I have recorded all my data on my piece of paper so I can graph it later on. All right, we did it. It's been 10 hour, two minutes and capacity 100.6 amp hour. It's still going. So I'm just gonna let it go until it shuts down. All right, the BMS just shut down. Battery voltage 366 millivolts 
and the uh, tester just stopped. Let's see what we got. Time passed 10 hour 11 minutes. Capacity 101.99 amp hour. Almost 102 amp hour. So there you go. Over 100 amp hour. And these are the data I have recorded. Here is all of the data I have gathered. And here is the discharge curve. Looks beautiful. It's time for a discharge test. This battery is capable of doing 100 amp continuous discharge. So let's go ahead and test that. I got my 2000 watt inverter ready to be connected. But first, I'm going to use my anti-spark device, aka resistor. This will prevent spark on the battery terminal and uh, prevent damage to the terminal. You see no spark, just a few seconds. And now we can disconnect. Whoa! Connect. Whoa! Connect. Whoa! It's time to do a load test, shall we? I actually did a load test a couple of days ago. This battery is rated at 100 amp continuous discharge. So I would assume that it would shut down for anything that go over 100 amp. So for my test, I ran it at 125 amps continuous for 10 minutes. And it did not shut down. And I try again at 137 amps continuous for 5 minutes and it did not shut down either. And that was a couple of days ago. So I contacted EcoWorthy Technical Support and this is their response. So basically what they're saying is the BMS is programmed to shut down at around 135 amps. My test was 137 amps and there are some tolerance in the test so I'm just going to push it a little bit higher something above 150 amps and see what we got. Let's try this again shall we. I got my 1500 watt electric kettle that's 145 amps. 100 watt light bulb that's about 10 amps. Total 155 amps. Here we go. One hundred and forty four amps. Let's start the timer. Let's turn on the light bulb. One hundred and fifty six amp total. Oh, it shuts down at about thirty six seconds. Battery voltage 3.7 volts. So let me turn this off. See how long it takes to uh, recover. I lost a few seconds there, but uh, we'll see. There we go. About 16 seconds plus a few seconds. I've lost probably about 20 seconds to recover. So there you go, the BMS actually turns off at over 150 amps to protect the battery from being overloaded. So for this battery, when you go over 150 amps, you have about 36 seconds before the BMS would shut down. And then another 20 seconds or so for the BMS to recover. It's time for teardown. Let's go ahead and open up the top cover and see what's inside. It's coming out. Ta-da! First impression. Check out this insulator. I've never seen such a nice rubbery and thick insulator for the terminals like this. Let's take a first look inside the battery. Everything is nice and neat. Tight. 
ta-da. The first thing out of the case is this battery is built different. Usually for most of the batteries that I review, the BMS is on top of the battery cell. In this case, this is the top of the cell and the BMS is on the side like that but they flip it sideways so that now the cell is on the side and the BMS is on the top let's take a look at the battery we got four prismatic cells and they are connected in series and they are laser welded together and that is a very secure connection there's a label on top of the battery and it says 081CB7900 26C I tried to do a Google search but uh, I couldn't come up with any results but the sales they look like good quality sales all of the connections are secured by screws and not by soldering and screws are more secure than soldering there's one thing on this battery that I noticed that is different from many batteries that I have revealed is that the whole battery is tied together not by tape but by metal brackets there are two metal brackets here on the bottom and it's screwed onto this metal bracket it looks like plastic but it's painted black but it's metal that's my magnet right there and that is a lot more secure than tape let's take a look at the top of the battery we got a single number six wire that goes from the main terminal of the battery not through a BMS but goes straight out to the top terminal the main negative terminal from the battery it goes out to two number eight wires go to the BMS and it goes out to the top terminal all of the connections are secured by screws and bolts and the main wires they are also protected by very thick fiberglass sleeves so this sleeve provides a good heat shield for the wires this is also not something I see in other batteries so this battery is very carefully built let's take a look at the BMS the BMS is actually installed upside down and it's insulated by two pieces of fiberglass board. So it's got good protection there. It looks like a very popular BMS. There's a sticker right in there. Let's take a peek inside and take a look at the sticker. Okay, I can see the logo. And see the part number let me look it up that is the part number and this is a JBD board 100 to 150 amp continuous discharge so that is the board it has built-in Bluetooth continuous current 100 to 150 amps so I see that logo that's a JBD logo this is a quality and very popular BMS board. On the BMS, looks like we have two heat sensors. So one pair of black and one pair of white wires going up here to the same cell. Why? Let me remove them and check them out. Okay, so that's one. That's two. The first sensor is a regular thermistor. This is something you typically see in other batteries. The second one looks different. And there is a part number on it. It says BHO2 BB8D 75 degrees Celsius. Let's go ahead and do a Google search. And this is what I come up with. Small size temperature control switch normally close and this one shuts down at 75 degrees Celsius let's go ahead and test it right now I just hooked up a light bulb to the battery and I'm gonna heat up the heat sensor here and it should shut down the BMS oh yes it just turned off yeah that's hot 
Let's see how long it takes to turn back on. There we go. It automatically turns back on when the heat sensor is cool enough. That is pretty good. Next is the low temperature protection test and it should shut down the BMS when it's cold enough. Let's try the other sensor which is the uh, cold temperature protection. I first tried with just ice cold water at zero degrees Celsius but it did not turn off and if you look at the label here it says negative seven so ice cold water is not cold enough so this time I try with uh, water mixed with salt and the temperature is check this out negative 14 degrees Celsius that should be cold enough so let's go ahead and plug in my charger all right it's charging 13.6 volt 24.7 amps let's go ahead and put it in the uh, ice bath let's see when it's gonna stop there you go let's see if it would resume charging I'm gonna warm it up with my finger here there we go it's charging so it works just fine so there you go that's the inside of the eco worthy uh, little man phosphate battery it has good quality sales good BMS and the build quality is a lot better than many little man phosphate battery that I have revealed and they pay meticulous attention to details like this fiberglass sleeve here the sleeves for the terminals all the wires are properly sized they are routed nice and neat nothing loose nothing hanging around so that's very good bill for the money all right it's time to put the battery back into the case today i'm going to use this glue it's a new special blend it's homemade it's free it's organic and best of all it's the best glue for this battery. I'm going to use a syringe to inject it in there. Now, we'll just close and flip it over. All right, I let it dry overnight. Let's see what we got. Ready to place a bet? Here we go. Oh yeah, that's holding. That's not falling out. There you go special blend works and I only use about two-thirds of the syringe instead of two and that's all for now folks till next time thanks for watching